Once upon a time, there was a Dongwa. One day he rode his donkey into town to teach with a sack on his back containing some books. While he was resting by roadside, a wolf came running. When wolf saw Dongwa, he quickly lay on the ground trembling and said, Sir, help me, there's a hunter after me. Mr. Dongwa thought he was pitiful and said, If you hide in my cloth bag, the hunter will not catch you. He took the books out of the bag and let the wolf then in. Then he put a book over it and tied the mouth of the bag. Soon hunter came after him with a bow. Have you seen a wolf? Mr. Dongwa shook his head. It has run away. When the hunter was far away, Dongwa let wolf out of bag. He was about to go on. Sir, I'm starving, so go ahead and let me eat you. Mr. Dongwa was very frightened. Why don't you be reasonable? I save your life, and you want to eat me. The wolf said, you are not reasonable. If I don't eat you, I'll starve. You're so kind. Just let me starve to death. Wolf pounced with wide mouth open. Dongwa hid behind the donkey. I'll find you someone to judge. See who's being unreasonable. Snorted the wolf. Well, if people say you're being unreasonable, I'll eat you. They walked forward together and saw a farmer, and Dongwa asked him to comment. Farmer listened to Dongwa's words. I don't believe what you're saying. You saved his life. Will he eat you? He must eat you because you want to hurt him. When Wolf heard this, he was happy. That's it, he put me in a cloth bag and pressed books on me, so I couldn't breathe. Isn't he trying to hurt me? Farmer said to Wolf, I don't believe what you said either. You are big, how can bag hold it? The wolf answered with a smile, I can put legs and tail together. I'll get in a sack and show you. Then the wolf dived into the sack, with his legs and tail tucked in. Farmer stepped forward and tied up the pocket. He said to Dongwa, If you pity him, he will eat you. Just shoot him. Then he lifted his hoe and hit the bag hard, killing the wolf. Kids, so much for the fable Mr. Dongwa. What would you do if you were Mr. Dongwa? Forest Kindergarten concert was about to begin, and the zebra teacher prepared a special surprise for the children, a sparkly little star costume. The animals excitedly put on their costumes and danced in the classroom. They lit up the whole class like a group of happy little stars. Then there was laughter from the crowd. The zebra teacher went to look curiously. It was the bear Mika's belly was too big, and the star suit propped up a tear. Mika was so upset that, he rubbed his round stomach in the mirror, and thought he needed to lose weight. Mika, don't be sad, I'll get you another costume, okay? The zebra teacher gently comforted Mika, but Mika only had eyes for the star suit. That night, Mika was hungry and ate only half an apple. This gave Mother Bear a fright. Baby, what's wrong? Why do you eat so little? Mom, I want to lose weight. I want to wear a star suit like everyone else. Baby, you don't have to feel bad about your body. If you look at these flowers, they are in all kinds of shapes, but they are all beautiful because they are all creations of nature. The animals in the forest are the same. Each creature has unique features. To be their own is the happiest. Mother took Mika into the garden and gently comforted him. I get it, Mom. I want to be the only bear in the forest. At his mother's words, Mika's worries disappeared and a smile reappeared on his face. Soon the forest concert came. 
The animals put on beautiful costumes and stood singing together. Look, Miko was in the middle position. He wore a beautiful black bow tie, happily sitting on a glowing moon. Completed the concert performance with his partners. Boys and girls, so much for the one and only bear story. What shows have you been in? A fox has a beautiful big tail. He runs freely in the forest every day. One day, his tail was caught in an animal trap and he felt very inferior when he saw that all the other foxes had beautiful tails. His heart became more depressed. He decided to persuade the other foxes not to have tails so that everyone would be the same. So he called all the foxes together and tried to persuade them. Didn't you know this? Your tails are big. If you cut off the tail, you'll be lighter. And tails are a danger. Which is how some hunters find us. So I suggest you all cut your tails off. A fox said, don't listen to him. He lost his tail and tried to drag us down. The other foxes thought it made sense, and all refused the suggestion of a fox. The fox saw that his plan had not worked. He was angry, he wanted to go, suddenly a little mouse ran out of the grass. Looked at fox with the severed tail, oh, that is so funny. What do you know? You need to stop trying to change people. A true friend doesn't care if you have a tail. Only if you are a good fox. When fox with the severed tail heard mouse's words, he felt very ashamed. Boys and girls, the story of the fox with the severed tail is finished. Do you know why other foxes didn't listen to the advice of the off-tailed fox? Mom went to the supermarket with Coke. Mom took Coke's hand. Coke grabbed Mother's hand. Don't get lost in a supermarket. Don't worry, Mom. Coke gently hooked Mother's hand, but thought that only kindergarten children can get lost. Oh, no. Holding hands with Mom is childish. We can't let them see it. They'll laugh at me. Coke quietly let go of Mom's hand and looked around, afraid of seeing classmates. Oh. Coke accidentally knocked over a boy. Coke, what are you doing here? Zhuang fell on his butt. He got up and asked, Mom and I are shopping. And you? Coke also got up from the floor and patted the dust. I came by myself. Only kids walk around the supermarket holding hands. Zhuang pretended not to care. Looking at Zhuang, Coke made it difficult to say hesitantly, I'm here with my mom. Heard the voice of two children. Coke's mother came over. Isn't this Zhuang? Why are you alone? Where's your family? Just then, suddenly announcement began. Please go to the information desk. Your mother is waiting for you. He blushed and bowed his head. Coke mother rubbed his head and led the two children together to the information desk. The sister at the help desk took Zhuang to his mom. Don't run around in the supermarket. Kid, hold an adult's hand in case you get lost. Coke is also serious to learn little sisters, said to Zhuang. Children should hold adults' hands, in case you get lost. Zhuang shyly made a smile at Coke and Coke immediately smiled back at him. Two naughty children were taken away by their mothers. Kids, so much for the story. Be sure to stay close to parents outside. Don't get lost. Once upon a time, the cat and the mouse are good friends. They spend the whole day. One day, forest running games will be organized. 
animals want to win. They are eager to try and look forward to the sports meeting tomorrow morning. Cat said to Mouse, Mouse brother, you know I love to sleep late. You can wake me up tomorrow morning. The mouse said yes, but he thought again. If I wake the cat up and it runs faster than me, that gives me a new competitor. I'm not calling him. The mouse went out at dawn the next day and met the cow on the way. The mouse approached and asked cow to take it with him. The simple and honest cow agreed. The mouse climbed on the cow's back. The cow ran quickly. Near the end, the cunning mouse slipped off the back of the cow and became the first. The cow worked hard and only got the second place. It was angry and has been staring ever since. The animals arrived at the end. Sports meeting ended. At noon, the cat woke up. He found that the meeting was over, and Mouse had won first place. He was furious, and vowed to take account of Mouse. From then on, Mouse was afraid that Cat would seek revenge on him. Mouse hides from Cat, and Cat catches Mouse. To this day, Mouse is afraid to see the Cat's shadow, and hides in his hole even in broad daylight. Kids, the story of Mice Afraid of Cats is finished. Do you know why mice are afraid of cats? Today is the day of the forest game. Mika gathered his courage and signed up for the race. Mika's best friends, Fox and Rabbit also came to the race to cheer for Mika. The little rabbit held a big horn and shouted at the bear. Come on Mika. You are the best. The game has begun. All the players were running fast on the track. Mika wasn't very fast, but he tried to catch up with the people in front of him. He clenched teeth and swung arms. Little Rabbit was cheering for Mika. But Little Fox was worried. He looked at the last Mika and said worriedly, Mika is so slow. I wonder if he can make it to the finish line. Just then, Mika stumbled. Fall to the ground. Fox and Rabbit ran at once to help him up. Are you okay? I'm fine. Mika shook his head to show that he was okay. Oh, what shall we do? Can you keep running? Fox sighed again. Fox, how can you say that? Mika is our best friend. We should cheer him up. Mika will finish the race. Little Rabbit Eyes firmly said. I'm sorry, Mika. I shouldn't have said that. Fox realized his mistake and apologized to Mika. It doesn't matter, Little Fox. I want to keep running. Let's run with you. Okay, let's race to the finish line. The three friends encouraged each other and got back on the track together. Kids. Good friends encourage each other story finished. Have you ever taken part in a sports meeting? What sports do you like? There was a frog who lived in a dry well. He was so satisfied with his little world that he never thought of looking outside. One day a turtle passed by. The frog shouted at him. Why don't you come over to my house? Turtle happily went to the well. But found that well was too small for him. The turtle said to the frog. Sorry, I can't get in. Or you can come out and I'll show you to my house. The frog looked around his well and said to the turtle, I'm not interested in the outside world. I have everything in my big well. He continued to proudly say, Here can let me roll happy mud. There are clear water and green plants. There is only a day outside, bright and black. Too boring. Turtle was surprised. You have never been outside. 
outside is much more fun than the well. The forest where you live is very beautiful. Flowers are full of vitality. There are all kinds of animals. There is an endless sea in the distance, and countless free fish. Turtle shouted. He well is too boring. Go outside to have a look. The frog did not believe it. He jumped out of the well, and was shocked by the scene. Outside was really like the turtle said. He had never seen such a wide world. Boys and girls, it is our good tradition to be proactive, not to limit yourself to your environment, but to look at the outside world. So much for the frog in the well. The night of Christmas Eve snowed heavily, and snow fell thick that the whole street was covered. A little girl was selling matches in the snow. Matches sold. Anyone need matches. But no one paid any attention to her. People are rushing home for Christmas. The little girl shivered in the snow, and her was hungry. She came to a big house. Through the window, she saw a warm, bright room. In it was a Christmas tree with stars. The little girl thought of her grandma who loved her. Grandma told her, Wishes come true by wishing upon a star. The stars twinkle in the sky. The little girl shivered with cold. There was a fire to keep us warm. She decided to light a match to keep warm. The match lit up with a warm glow. In the light of the match, the little girl saw a roast chicken on a large plate. As soon as the match went out, turkey disappeared. The little girl lit another match, and this time she saw a huge Christmas tree with stars all over it. When the match went out again, the little girl struck it again. This time she saw her grandmother. The little girl shed tears. Suddenly the match went out. Grandma was gone. The little girl lit all the matches, brighter than the stars in the sky, and she saw her grandmother. She cried, Take me away, grandmother, where there is no cold or hunger. Grandma and the girl went away in light and joy to a place where there was no cold, no hunger, and no pain. On Christmas morning, the snow stopped. The little girl was found sleeping in the street. She sat on a street corner with a smile and a handful of burnt-out matches lying around her. But the little girl never woke up. The story of the little match girl is finished. A buffalo is grazing on the grass. It has a big body. It looks very strong. Suddenly some wild wolves came out. They were very excited to see the buffalo. Such a big piece of meat, it'll feed us for days. They surrounded the buffalo and took the opportunity to attack. Some pounce from the front and some bite from the back. The buffalo didn't care. It fought with two feet. Before long, several wolves were dead. Wolves got scared and ran away. Buffalo chased them. The wolf ran into the forest, which was thickly underbrush. The buffalo stopped in the forest. Hey, bro. Why did you stop? Now it's time to go after the winner, and you have great feet. A squirrel who has been watching the fight urges the buffalo. What you say seems very reasonable, said the buffalo, but I can only stop now you know. The woods are too dense for me to move in. My feet will be blocked by branches. They can't exert power. The wolf is smaller and more agile in the woods than I am. I'm afraid they'll kill me when I get in there. 
The squirrel understood perfectly. A strength will become a weakness. Without considering the actual situation, Buffalo went with the squirrel back on the grass. Buffalo continued to graze. The squirrel jumped up a big tree. So much for the buffalo and the wolf. On a beautiful night, the moonlight shone softly in the forest. One little bear staggered out onto the grass. I ate too much today. Little bear rubbed his belly. He is too full to sleep at all. But what can I do without sleep? A cricket jumped out of the grass. He shook his long tentacles and jumped into a wild flower. But the cricket was so small that Bear looked around but could not see the cricket. Suddenly there was a faint rustling in the bushes. Who's there? Maybe he'd like to play with me. Little Bear went quietly to the leaves. It turned out to be a nest of baby birds, sleeping soundly in their nest. Bear picked up a large leaf and carefully covered the babies with it. Good night, dear baby. I still can't sleep. Little Bear was on the grass, watching the stars twinkle in the sky. Do you want to play with me? said Bear to the star. Well, there are so many of you. Little Bear counted his new friends one by one and drifted off to sleep. It was a beautiful night and the moonlight was shining softly on a little bear who was sleeping sweetly. Kids, so much for Bear who can't sleep. What do you do when you can't sleep? Chow led an army to battle. Land is almost scorched. All the way short of water and food, the soldiers walked very hard. Every few miles someone fell ill from heat stroke, even the strongest soldiers were about to lose their strength. Chow was very anxious at the sight. He stood on the hill looking for a place with water. But he was disappointed to find chapped earth everywhere. He looked back at his thirsty soldiers and thought anxiously that he must find a way to boost their morale. He was inspired to point to the front and shouted. Not far ahead was a large plum grove full of sweet and sour plums. Everybody hang in there a little bit and eat the plums to quench your thirst. When the soldiers heard Chow's words, they thought of the sour taste of the plums, as if they really ate the plums, and they suddenly became less thirsty. They hurried forward with all their spirits, and finally came to the place where there was water. This idiom is used to refer to consoling oneself with a dream when a wish cannot come true. Chow took advantage of the soldiers' reaction to plum and successfully overcame the difficulty of thirst. So much for this story, boys and girls. Mika hates baths every time. He screams and tries to escape. Mika didn't want to take a bath as usual. But mom mysteriously told Mika that the bathroom was different today. Would you like to take a look? Mom's words succeeded in getting Mika to wonder what's different about today's bathrooms. Well, Mika exclaimed as he opened the door. The bathroom was filled with crystal clear bubbles. There was a bubble machine by the bathtub. One bubble after another flew in the bathroom. Mika was so surprised. He quickly jumped into the bath to play. Whirr! Mika blew the bubbles into the air. Mika grabs the bubble and smashes it. 
bubbles become pixies. Layers of colorful bubbles in the light, like fairies dancing. Mika did not realize that it's full of bubbles. There was really a group of elves taking a joyful bath. It's so comfortable. I love baths. Yeah, it sucks not to take a shower and stink. That's right. Sometimes the body will break out, especially itchy. The elves are chatting happily with each other. Mika didn't like to bathe before. The elves were covered with dust. The dust holds them firmly. They couldn't breathe. Today's long-awaited bubble bath turned the genie's gray body white and bright. This night, Mika soon fell asleep to the smell of body wash and had a beautiful dream. He dreamed of a group of white little elves dancing around him happily. Children. Showering not only cleans the body but also relieves fatigue. It's important to keep warm while showering. Watch your shower time. Don't shower right after strenuous exercise. These days little rabbit jumps sick fever and ears have turned pink. Mother anxiously took jump to the hospital. The giraffe doctor checked for the jump, he said softly. Jump is such a brave rabbit and, then after the injection can go home. As soon as Jump heard about injection, he struggled to run under table. The giraffe doctor told mother not to worry. He wanted to have a talk with Jump. Jump Ron said, I don't give the injection. Dr. Giraffe said, I'm not here to get you a shot. I'm afraid of things. At this, Little Rabbit loosened his grip on his ears and came out from under the table. Are doctors scared, too? Of course, jump doesn't cure disease. From then on eat radish, do not feel sweet or smell the fragrance of flowers, Dr. Giraffe said. Jump remembered the time when he used to play happily in the forest. He likes to lie on the grass and smell the flowers. Think of here, little rabbit firm confidence. Hold mother. I'm not afraid anymore. I want to heal. Mother rabbit smiled and touched Jump's head. Now that's a mama's brave baby. Jump waved goodbye to doctor after the injection. Boys and girls, so much for the story. Now that you've heard this story, you're not afraid of injections anymore. The class is over and the students are having a rest. Schwang and Coke are playing in the classroom. Look at me, sharpshooter. Look at my two guns. Chalk and spitballs are flying like bullets. Soon, Chuang's face is white and red. Like a small cat. Look at my underhand attack. Chuang throws a spitball out in a whoosh. Suddenly, the spitball fell on the teacher's head. Who did this? Teacher is angry with the paper balls. The world is over. Chuang went to apologize to teacher. I'm sorry. I threw spitballs, and I miss who. Coke also bravely stood up and admitted his mistake. Looking at the two honest children, teacher was less angry. And sincere said, Classroom space is small. Play is easy to get hurt. Cannot do so in the future. After the teacher left, Zhuang said to Coke, You're very loyal. You're not bad either, bro. The two children looked at each other, pretending to be serious, and could not help but hug and laugh. Boys and girls, do you remember this story? Rabbit Jump and Bear Mika went to the park to dig sand. Look, they have dug bucket full. 
Who is hiding behind the tree? Here is Cat Meow Meow. She want to play with Mika and jump. She is too shy to go forward. She hid behind the tree watched. Monkey coming from a distance. Shall I play with you? Mika and Jump answered enthusiastically. Yeah, let's play. The shy little cat was still afraid to come forward. The monkey is naughty. He jumped on piles of sand and stones, making little bear and little rabbit laugh. The cat came out from behind the tree. Shall I play with you? But her voice was too low for anyone to hear. Elephant is coming. He said in a booming voice that I would play too. All right, come on. The friends answered happily. The cat could not bear it anymore. She asked loudly. Shall I play with you? All right, come on. The friends also answered happily. Everyone invites the cat over. Meow meow, come build a sand castle with us. It's so much fun to play together. Good friends have fun together. Meow overcame shyness and made many friends. Look how she's smiling right now. How would you greet a strange child? Have you ever met a shy child like Meow Meow? Today, the forest school is going to hold a football match. The animals ran to the playground excitedly. In the beginning, the hippo passed the ball to the tiger, but the ball flew over the little tiger's head. The football ended up on the roof. There was an anxious discussion. What should we do? After a long discussion, they decided to throw something up and smash the football down, so Mika Bear threw a shoe up. Bang! Not only did the football not fall, but the shoe got stuck in the roof. The little monkey threw his bag up and got stuck. There is no choice but to disband. And Mika went home dejected. The next morning, there was a light rain in the sky. The animals came back to the campus. Mika and Little Monkey have not forgotten yesterday. The rain became heavier. The rain just washed soccer balls, shoes, and school bags off the roof. The animals saw and took back their things one after another. Everyone played happily again. What a lucky day. Boys and girls, that's all for one lucky day. Did anything lucky happen to you? Today is Little Rabbit's birthday. Friends are to celebrate him. The Little Rabbit blew out the candles and danced happily. Mom, please help us share the birthday cake. Little Rabbit can't wait to eat. Mother Rabbit gave the cake piece by piece to everyone. Everyone ate it with gusto, except Little Bear, who looked sadly at the cake. Little bear, why don't you eat? I can't eat by myself. My mother feeds me. Bear, you are three years old, and you must learn to feed yourself. Little rabbit handed little bear a little spoon, but I won't. Little bear sheepishly took the spoon. It's easy, you see how I eat. The other little rabbits took a bite of the cake, put it in mouth and show it to bear. Little Bear learns to eat by himself like a little rabbit. He said happily, eating by myself is really sweet. Kids, the story of eating by yourself is really delicious is finished. Once there was a poor boy named Aladdin. He is handsome and kind and very warm. He grew up with his mother. One day he met a strange businessman. I have a magic lamp that can be rubbed to grant three wishes. Aladdin bought magic lamp. He wiped the lamp. 
A miracle happened. A great god stood before Aladdin and said, I am a jinn. What can I do for you? Aladdin used his first wish to become a rich prince and meet a beautiful princess. They fell in love. But Princess's father did not allow them, for Aladdin was only a poor boy in his eyes. The king locked the princess away from Aladdin to make matters worse. When Dark Wizard learned the secret of lamp, but he didn't know where the lamp was. Wizard, pretending to be a merchant, a new light for an old one. Princess did not know the secret. She traded the lamp for the wizard. The wizard hid the lamp and used its power to do bad things. But Aladdin finally found the lair and successfully recaptured the magic lamp. Then Aladdin made a second wish. Help me teleport wizard to a place where he can never hurt anyone. The wizard disappeared from sight. After this, he knew that magic lamp will always be bad people think about. He cannot always rely on the power of lamp. Aladdin made one last wish to the lamp. I'm going back to being me. Aladdin was an ordinary, poor, happy young man. This time he did not feel inferior. His love for princess impressed King. The king decided to marry the princess to him. Aladdin and the princess had a big wedding in the palace. They lived a happy life. Aladdin did not keep the magic lamp for himself, but gave it to people in need, boys and girls. So much for Aladdin's lamp story. The large candle and the little candle come from the same family, but their positions and uses are quite different. Large candle was white, it was placed on a candlestick in banqueting halls to light up the whole room. The little candle are kept in the kitchen to light up the cook's work, little candle said proudly, it doesn't matter, my light helps the cook's work. And what's more important than food? On that day, the hostess prepared a grand dinner to make banquet hall more beautiful. She prepared many candles. Large candles were placed in the center of the ballroom, while little candles were assigned to the cooks and maids. Sun was given a basket of potatoes, two red apples, and a little candle. The little boy happily took the basket home. The little boy went home and lit the candle. He looked at the spark and smiled happily. Wow, that's the most beautiful candlelight. In spite of the faint light of the little candle, its pungent smell, he felt very happy that at last he could play his part. The boy also felt happy after lighting the little candle because it made his room very warm. Mother warmed the potatoes. The little boy and his mother ate with great relish and enjoyed the evening. The big candle and the little candle shone in different places. Together to light up this wonderful world. Kids, the story of the large candle and the little candle is finished. Have you ever seen candles in your life? There was a beautiful girl in the ancient state of you. Her name was Shishir. Her face was beautiful, her figure as soft as a wicker, and her grace was everywhere. When she smiles, it's even more intoxicating. But Shishir has a disease. Her heart hurts. Frowning Shishir walked on the road covering her heart. People thought she was beautiful, even though she was ill. They wanted to help her. There was an ugly girl named Dongshur. She is not only ugly, but also rude. Nobody likes her. She saw how popular Shishir was when she clutched her chest and frowned. She was jealous. She thought, since Shishir can make people like this, I can give it a try. 
So she followed Shishir's example, walking around the village clutching her chest and frowning. However, Dongshir does not have Shishir's beauty. The way she clutched her chest and frowned made her look worse. When the villagers saw Dongshir's strange appearance, they kept far away. Dongshir thought she could become beautiful, but she was laughed at instead. It turns out that it is foolish to imitate others blindly, boys and girls. The story of the imitation is finished. The practice of blindly imitating the road is stupid, will not receive good results, and even counterproductive. The rabbit has four legs and can jump and run fast. The turtle has four legs and can crawl very slowly. One day the rabbit met the tortoise and saw turtle slowly that he wanted to tease it. So he said to the turtle, slow turtle, let's race. The turtle was angry, rabbit, don't be arrogant, let's compare. The rabbit almost burst into laughter. The turtle said, okay, let's run from here. Whoever gets to a big tree first wins. The rabbit ran away so fast and he ran so far. The rabbit looked back. The turtle only went a little way. It's a joke that a turtle can race a rabbit. I'll sleep right here. He can't beat me. Victory must be mine. The rabbit lay down proudly, closed his eyelids, and really fell asleep. Turtle crawled slowly, but he keeps going. When he crawled to the rabbit, the rabbit was still sleeping sweetly. Turtle was tired and wanted to rest, but he knew that the rabbit ran faster than he could only win if he kept going. Rabbit looked behind him when he woke up. Where did the turtle go? He looked forward. Oh. The turtle has climbed under the big tree. The rabbit looked and hurried to the end. But it was too late. The tortoise won. Story is finished. This story tells us that success can only be achieved if we do things steadily. Once upon a time there was a scholar. But when he read, he always wanted to finish the book quickly and never thought about the truth in the book. One day, the scholar and others went to the teacher's home. The teacher offered a plate of pears and dates for everyone, everyone while eating the fruit while chatting. An old master suddenly said with emotion, there is no perfect thing in the world. Everyone expressed curiosity and asked the old master why he said this. Master said, take eating fruit as an example. Eating pears is good for people's teeth, but eating too much will hurt the spleen. Eating dates is just the opposite of eating pears which is good for spleen, but eating too much is harmful to the teeth. Scholar thought for a while. I have a good idea. The old master quickly asked him. What good idea do you have? Tell me. The scholar said. When you eat a pear, just bite it, but do not swallow it so that the pear will not hurt spleen. Everyone was surprised. Scholar continued to say, do not bite when eating jujube, so that it will not hurt the teeth. Scholar said that he swallowed the date directly without chewing it, but he choked suddenly. <coughs> the guests were frightened, and it was difficult to help him spit out date. The scholar choked his face red. He felt so sick that he could not stop coughing. Seeing that his methods did not work, he made a fool of himself, and was too ashamed to say anything. Story tells us, have a comprehensive understanding of things, and complete things step by step.
A fox in the forest has been hungry for several days. He walked on the road with his head down and his stomach growling. The fox said to himself that I was very hungry. When will I have a good meal? Suddenly a smell came. Fox looked up and found a big grape rack with strings of big grapes. Each grape is crystal clear, like a bright purple stone. Looks very delicious. The fox looked at the grapes and said they looked really delicious. Fox wanted to eat grapes but he couldn't reach them. He tried to jump but he couldn't reach them. The fox said, these grapes are so high. How can I reach them? He walked, found a bamboo pole, with which he tried to pick grapes, but failed. These grapes are so hard to pick. The fox sighed and dropped the bamboo pole. In a restless mood, but he saw a big stone not far away, and ran happily. He believed that with these tools, he would be able to pick grapes. He stood carefully on the stone, holding bamboo pole upward. He was only a little short of the grapes. But instead of picking grapes, the fox fell down from the rock. He groped his buttocks and cried out in pain. The fox patted the soil on his ass and said angrily that the grape must be sour. It will only cause stomach trouble. I don't eat. Then he left the vineyard without going back. Boys and girls, this is the story of fox and grape. Do you think the grapes are sweet or sour? Mika and Jump went to play football in the forest. They were talking happily. Suddenly Jump stopped and pointed ahead. Look there. Mika looked over. Nest fell down. There were three shivering birds in it. They had just feathered and seemed afraid. They look like they need help, but we're too short. How do we put the nest back? Let's put the nest in place before we go home and get the ladder. Good idea. Two friends hit it off and set the nest carefully on a soft lawn. Careful Mika also found a big leaf to shield the birds from the sun. The two children rushed back panting with the ladder and found a huge figure standing near the bird's nest. The man had sharp claws and a black mane. It's a wild boar. Jump exclaimed. What to do? He's gonna eat those three little birds. But I have never heard of wild boars eating small animals. He looks so terrible that he looks like a bad man. Jump rushed out. Stop, don't hurt the bird. To surprise of two children, the wild boar turned. Oh, it is Mika and Jump. Can you lend me a ladder? I want to send Bird home. Jump blushed and gave the ladder to Uncle Boar. He climbed the ladder, put the nest back in the tree. The birds are home. Uncle Boar returned the ladder to Jump. Jump quickly called him. Sorry, Wild Boar Uncle. I shouldn't say you are a bad person. Uncle Boar said to Jump, It doesn't matter. Being wary of strangers is a sign of knowing how to protect yourself. Go home. Don't let mother worry. Then he turned and left. Goodbye, Uncle Boar. Jump and Mika shouted together. The birds in the trees also sang as if they were saying goodbye. Boys and girls, so much for the terrible Boar Uncle. Why did Jump think the boar was a bad man? There was a cunning fox in the forest who was trying to deceive others. The fox had a friend who was a silly wolf. He believed the fox. One day, they were walking when they saw a horse. 
with a bright mane and white spots on its legs. It looks strong, Fox said to Wolf, that there was a strong horse eating grass. You go say hello, Wolf asked. Why say hello? Because he's our neighbor, and we're gonna be nice to him. So they went together to horse. Horses showed no interest in them, and turned away. Fox hurried forward to stop him. Hello, what's your name? The horse replied. Master has slapped name on my hoof. You can have a closer look. He lifted a hoof. Fox refused. I didn't go to school. I didn't study. But Mr. Wolf received a good education. He was very proud to herd this compliment. He went over to read the words. Horse lifted its hoof and aimed it at the wolf with a sharp kick. Wolf groaned in pain, and the fox said. I see, the horse's name was written on the wolf's mouth. Kids, so much for the wolf, horse and fox. Why do you think fox tricked wolf into greeting horse? One day a fox was looking for food in the forest. When he fell into a dry well, he tried to climb out but the walls were too high. He thought bitterly that this would be end. Maybe I'm gonna die here. Fox saw Tiger pass and came up with a plan. He shouted at the tiger. Sky's falling down. Why are you hanging around? Tiger asked suspiciously. What are you talking about? The sky is fine. Fox pretended to be surprised. What? Haven't you heard the sky's gonna fall tomorrow? He went on talking. Hide in pit when sky falls so you don't get crushed. You're my friend. I can't bear to see you crushed to death. Thank you, Fox. You have a lot of loyalty, Tiger said. I was wondering if I could join you in the pit. As you please, I don't care anyway, Tiger jumped into the pit. They talked and Fox began to tickle Tiger. Tigers don't play and are very ticklish. He gave a growl. Stop it, or I'll throw you out of the pit. And the sky will fall on you. But Fox never stopped. Tiger got angry. I don't care if the sky falls on you. Then he threw the fox out of the pit. The fox succeeded. Out of the pit the fox took off. Boys and girls, so much for the tiger and the fox. Autumn is coming. The leaves turned golden and fell to the ground. The ants are busy collecting. Fallen fruit and carrying it back to the hole. They're busy and sweating. The ants have a lot of food in their granary, but they want to fill it up to get through the winter. The cicadas are singing loudly at this time. Cicadas singing loudly while thinking about my singing is really very good. Cicada saw the ants working hard to store food. You're asking for trouble. Why do you make yourself so tired? Ant didn't answer. Because they have a lot of work to do. To collect some leaves to carry back. And also do the necessary winter quilts. And jackets and clothes. Winter is coming. The ants hide at home and eat food comfortably. Over the fire. Somebody's at the door. The ant opened door. It was the cicada. Cicada said. Give me some food, bro. I'm starving. The ant said, in the autumn, why don't you store up some grain? The cicada said, I am busy singing in autumn. The ant said, sing in the fall and starve in the winter. And he closed the door. Boys and girls, so much for ants and cicadas. If you were an ant, would you give the cicada food? The cold winter is coming. The snow fell like feathers. The wind whistled like a wolf. 
A farmer was walking through the snow with a hoe. He was going to field. As he walked, he noticed something dark in the snow. This is a frozen snake. The farmer dared to look forward and was scared and jumped consciously away. The snake is pitiful. In such cold weather, it'll freeze to death. Farmer relented and picked up the snake and put it in clothes. With the warmth of farmer, snake soon came to life. It stretched out its tail and yawned lazily. You're awake, snake. Don't worry, we'll be home soon. But the snake in his arms bit the farmer hard. Farmer fell painfully. I saved your life. Why would you bite the hand that feeds you? The snake said slowly. Because I'm a snake. Then it went away without looking back and disappeared into the snow. The farmer was full of remorse. I took pity on myself, but I got bad results. Boys and girls. So much for the farmer and the snake. The story tells us to distinguish between good and evil. Protect yourself while helping others.